Hello everyone, welcome to Research Hub. I'm Ziaul Hakmunim, the founder of Research Hub. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use ChatGPT or maybe other uh, generative AI tools to predict Bitcoin price. It could be not only Bitcoin price, you could use this to forecast shipping freight rates, you could use this approach to forecast weather forecasts. But I have to declare that, you know, I'm not saying that the forecasts are going to be accurate and they're going to be true in the future. It's just I'm making a tutorial on showing how to implement ChatGPT for making forecast. And I'm using Bitcoin data as an example. So here, if I Google Bitcoin data, I get some web hits here. I know that Yahoo Finance allows us to download the data, okay? So I can actually download the data from here. Here we have several options for downloading data daily, weekly, monthly. Uh, we are going to look into historical prices. And here we have one year data. So it's up to you how many years of data we want. So yeah, one year is maybe fine, but maybe let's say we want to have more than one year, we could have maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say, yeah, let's say from 2020, okay? So let's say we could have it from 2020 on January 22, yeah, 2024. So today is 20 January 24, so we take four years. And then we apply it. And then we are going to download the data. Okay. So I have the data downloaded here. Yeah, this is my Bitcoin USD. This is my data. So if I open it, let's have a look how it looks like. So this is how the, the data looks like. Okay, we have the date. So we have, actually I think here we have only one year of data. It did not really give us uh, from 2020, I think. Maybe this did not work. Yeah, this did not work actually. So if I wanted to have, if I go back to 2020, uh, January 20, done, apply. Maybe now I will get from uh, 2020. It is, let me see. Yeah, now I get it from 2020, okay? So we can use this data to get some forecast. Normally this data gives us the, for every day, the opening price, the high, the low, and the closing price, and adjusted closing price and the volume, okay? So we can actually use this for making some predictions. So we could actually do a linear regression model or a univariate time series model. So let me show you how we can do that. So here I am on my chat GPT, okay? And here I'm going to load the data. So now it allows the latest version, chat GPT 4, allows us to actually load the data or anything that we want to load, okay? And I'm going to pick the one, the second one that I downloaded because it was covering data from 2020. So we had few more years. So, if I want to run a model using this data and I want to get the scripts from ChatGPT, then I need to really give it a very specific command. The more specific command I will give it, the more specific script I will get. So here I wrote this command that the attached data set covers historical daily Bitcoin data from January 20, 2020 until January 20, 2024. The date column has the date in this format. Okay, so uh, we can see here it's um, day, month, and year format. So that's the command I'm writing here. And we want to forecast. We want to forecast the highest daily Bitcoin price in the high column. Okay, for the seven days starting from January 21, 2024, so from the next day, from tomorrow, using the ARIMA model. I have published a study in the past where we did some uh, experiments with ARIMA and autoregressive neural network models, 
And there we kind of shown that Arima is a good model to forecast daily Bitcoin price. So that's why I know about it. And that's why I'm using the command Arima model. So provide the R script for it. So if I run it, let's see what happens. So it's taking some time to analyze. So it is giving us the whole list of things that we have to do. And I have been using this forecast package before and the code looks pretty good to me. I'm just going to copy them. So now I come back to my R window. I'm going to open a new R script. Okay. So I will just paste it here. I will save it. Uh, let's say I say Bitcoin chat GPT. So I'm going to save it here. So this is another another R script that we have used in another video, but we are going to work with this one here now. I've already installed the forecast. I don't remember if I have the T-series, but most likely I already have T-series. If I don't have it, I will get a command from R, you know, that I don't have, have it and I have to install it. Actually, yeah, it's, uh, it's already there, it's installed, okay. So now it says that I have to load the data, okay, and it has put the commands, but I have to put the path of the data, okay. So I will go to my computer here, the data set I put in the download, so I will just copy this and I'm going to paste it here. One thing is that in R, this has to be the opposite way. So it has to be like this, you know, for it to read it. So that's something we are just updating manually. So it's in the download folder and it's in CSV format. And this is the name of the file. So I have to also copy this and I'm just going to paste it here dot csv here actually i have to put this dash okay yeah so this is my path for the file so as soon as i click here load it should be here loaded in my r environment so let's see if it works it's it actually works very nicely so we see that we have 1462 observations seven variables okay and it says that convert the date column to date type I mean, it's already in the format, so I maybe don't have to do it, but let's see what happens if I run it. Yeah, it's implemented correctly, so we don't have to worry about it. Ensure the data is ordered by date. So to ensure that we can run this command, that also works fine without any errors. If there were any errors in console, we will get uh, the error uh, in red. I mean, we get the warnings also in red and the errors in red, like for example, this was just a warning text. It was just giving us some information, but errors we could see, we could read them, okay? And in another video, I have shown actually how we can uh, interpret these errors also using ChatGPT. So here we are saying, okay, uh, using the high column for forecasting here, uh, it's actually going to sh take the high high column, uh, it's using the frequency uh, of, so we are, we are storing the data of the high column in a time series in a frequency of 365 days because it's yearly data, it's daily data. And in a year we have 365 days normally. It is also shaking for a stationary. This is really cool. You know, it's kind of doing it in a very proper way, uh, in a very proper statistical way. Normally we do this, augmented Dickey Fuller test. So it actually gives us this value. If the data is not a stationary, make it a stationary, do referencing. So we are not really going to look into that at the moment. We are just going to proceed with the fitting of the ARIMA model. And normally the command is auto ARIMA. So we run it. And then we here it has run the model. I can see it, but it's not giving us really much information. If we want to see the information of the model, we could just command summary model, okay? If we wanted to see the information of the estimated model, okay? So then we get the coefficient. So it says the RMS 011 is the model that will give us 
uh, the best uh, information. Here we can see the mean absolute percentage error is going to be 1.95%. So that's actually pretty good accuracy of this model. And then to forecast, we use this, okay? And if we want to print the forecast, we'll get the values here, okay? So it basically says that this is going to be our uh, point forecast. Th these are the values that we are getting, okay? And this could be the lowest and highest values in 80% uh, confidence interval and 95% confidence interval. But here you see that the value for the forecast of the next day is actually the same. Most likely the fast first one that we got is a real forecast, but then the ones we got after that are maybe not the real forecast. These values here, five point something, these are just the time periods. So we had four year data. So this is the first one is just saying that it's first year, day one, first year, day two, and so on, okay? So, and here we see that we are using the ARIMA model 001, so which is using information only from the past one period. So that's why we're not really getting very varying uh, results for the future forecast. So only the first one is likely to be the real forecast. We could see that what was the last value, you know, that we had in our data. So let's say if I look here, the last value we had was, yeah, four point in the high column, I think 41,737. So we could say that uh, maybe the next day, the forecast is about 41,700. But maybe this is not the best model. Uh, and then we can actually ask it to give us the code for another uh, for forecasting model. So let's say if I said the R, let's see, R script for auto regressive neural network. So my prompt here may not be the best, but let's see what we get. So I just wrote that provide the R script for autoregressive neural network model for the same forecasting. So let's see what we get here. Again, it is just telling us to load the data using the forecast, uh, load, the, load the package for R and then load the data and so on. Gives us some explanation. So basically I can copy this code. And if I come back here, let's say I want to put it here, okay. We have already loaded the libraries and loaded the data. So I don't really have to do that. I actually also think I didn't need to do this, but I have done it also in the past. So I'll just remove them. Here, this is also done, okay, in the past command. So now this is something where, so up to this point was more or less same. Normally for neural network, we don't really worry about the stationary. So that's why the stationary command is not really part of here, part of this modeling here. And here the main command is netrar. So that's the command we use. Again, if we want to see the model information, so we can use the summary command. Now I'm actually going to call it model two. So if I want to keep both the previous model and this model, I'm just going to command call it model two. And I also put the model two here when we are forecasting. Here I'm going to call it forecast two and here I'm going to call it forecast two as well. So that we will have the information about the previous forecast with Arima and the new forecast will be saved under a different name, okay? So now let's run this. So, uh, I don't know, yeah, yeah, I ran the previous command. So let's run this line 37. It seems it's not working. I don't know why, yeah, now it works. And it was implemented properly. Now we want to run this to see the summary of the model. So here we can actually see the uh, detailed information about the model. And then here we are going to do the forecast using it. And then we want to see the forecast values. Okay, so now you see, you actually get different forecast for the next seven days. So this is the forecast for January 21, 2024. This is the forecast for 22, 23, and likewise for the next seven days. Okay, so this is the forecast for the high price for the next days. Similarly, we could actually do the forecast for uh, open, closing, and low as well, okay? 
So we just need to create a different variable and use the different variable names. Okay, so here instead of high price, we could have just used it for low price and so on. Let, let me show you an example. So let's say if I if I want to do it for, for the low price, okay, I'm, I'm just going to put a hash in front of this uh, dot thing so that the, it's deactivated. Okay, again, I'm just going to deactivate and hash. So let's say here, I'm going to say low price. Okay, low BTC here in our data set, we know it is written as low, right? So it is written as low. Yeah, so I just put the low here. And the frequency is 365, that's okay. Now I'm just going to, I see that the forecast of the auto regressive neural model is better. So I'm just going to paste that one. And here I'm going to call it model three. I Maybe it's better to call it low, yeah? Low model one or something like that, okay? Then here I will now update the name of the variable to low prices because here we now define it as low price. So it has to be same here. In the model here, I'm going to say low one because that's how we name the model here, right? And then in the forecast, I'm going to say low. And in the here also, I have to update them. Uh, I have to update the model name. So I'm just going to update it as model low one. Okay. And this one should be also model low. So this is how we could get the forecast of the lowest ones. So I'm just running them one by one. And here. So this is likely to be the lowest one. Okay. I hope you find it useful. This is just an example where we could see how we can use ChatGPT to generate uh, our script. You can do it similarly for Stata, Python, many other things, right? And you can then implement them in the software itself. You can actually also ask ChatGPT to uh, make the forecast inside the ChatGPT, but I don't really recommend that. I recommend that you take the models of the scripts and then implement it in the main software window because the computation of ChatGPT are, are often not so good. Okay, then good luck with your uh, analysis and research. Subscribe to Research Hub and keep supporting us. Bye-bye for now.